Ladies and gents, welcome to your reaction. And this is AI. What is an AI? Are you an AI? Am I an AI? That is definitely an AI. Oh look, I'm in news broadcast now. I mean, and I'm world. Whatever the fuck that is. So yeah, this internet historian uh, talking about AI, and it's gonna be awesome uh, because internet historians takes are always awesome. He started doing this in the field type of video on his secondary channel and which is always interesting where he talks to, uh, to one of his friend like uh, some other creator uh, Sumito usually and just basically like you know talk about like how AI is working like how AI images like AI has got gotten really good in past just two years. AI was already getting good and there was that whole AI image thing just two three years ago and now AI is so good even the videos are insanely good. Like AI made video, you really need to like look. I mean, sure, there's like telltale signs, right? Somehow, feet is a problem. They are ironing out that as well. Uh, people, people were saying that, and that's apparently true that AI is gonna get good really faster, and it makes sense when you know that much process is basically all those Nvidia CUDA cores and those kind of like thousands and thousands of cores at your disposal. You're gonna figure shit out really fast. All the kinks you have is not gonna take time. Right, so AI is getting insanely good at a point like it's it's hard to see. Like sometimes you see the video of like some model or something, and then you see like what the fuck this is AI. And sometimes you see some sign of like wait a minute that doesn't feel real, and then you see description. Oh wait a minute this is AI. So but there, it's not that far off like just three four by 2030. I'm sure that videos is gonna be like risky thing because you will not be able to tell if it's like AI or not. YouTube when you post videos, it asks you. Like, is this altered anyway? AI altered? Then you have to. Is law or something? You have to tell it or something. So, yeah, this is, this is gonna be an awesome video. Let's watch it. Remember, if you like my next one, don't forget to subscribe so that way I know which videos react to more. Uh, check out the next one. This link in the description. And yeah, let's watch it. AI. AI. All right. Who's the AI? I'm tired of being accused of being the AI clone. You're the AI clone. Don't listen to him. He's the one. Uh, uh, I don't know which one to shoot. There's literally uh, a scene like that in Fallout 4. What is it called? Inter uh, interactions. There are many interactions that can trigger at certain points. And uh, there's, there's, a, uh, there's a shack near a rail track where you find a power armor uh, near a quarry, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Where you basically, uh, you know, uh, that's that tr it triggered for me that like the two people arguing over like who's real and you're supposed to make a decision. You can't tell, know that. I mean, obviously, there's quick save and quick load there, so it's not really consequential. But if you if you play realistically and don't like do quick save a lot, survival mode, let's just say, that's a tricky one, right? You could kill a real person. So, yeah, Fallout 4 is like uh, ups and downs that way. Guys, I think it's me. Hey, man. Don't talk like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. None of us are None of us are None of us are Guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got a problem. How do I solve this? <laughs> it's a... You just, just click the... Wait a minute. Does that really stop uh, some robot or bot or whatever? They can't click. I'm not a robot. That always surprised me. Like, how is that possible? You just... Hmm. Well, have you tried... Um... A gun! Bang, 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 bang. I'm pretty sure that sometimes you click on, like, I'm not a robot. It. Uh, wait a minute, what the fuck? Oh, there we go. Yeah, sometimes when you click, I'm not the robot type of thing, like, it asks you to, like, click on certain images, like, adjust these many different type of things. But a lot of time when I click, like, I'm not a robot, it doesn't ask me anything. It's just like, oh, okay, I guess. So most of the time, if you click, I'm not a robot, like that's enough. Like what AI can do that. I just got distracted. I looked down. There was a video, like it's like five minutes crafts. Yeah. And they're, they're just going easy way to cut a watermelon in half. <laughs> and there's two people, one's on one side of a car door, one's on the other, and they wind up the window <laughs> and slices the watermelon in half. This is fucking genius. What they should do is they should put a knife on the top of oh, it. Oh, yeah. It the, was the, the, the glass. Yeah, the glass should be like broken glass at the top of every car. I, okay, so I've got one for AI. 
Once right. fully self-driving cars are yes. really here, mm -hmm. commuting will become a much smaller deal. You've arrived at your destination. Because if you can sleep in your car, then the commute isn't a problem. Yeah. So you... This is not that far-fetched. Imagine Metro. We lost a lot of people take Metro. This is Metro, but it will take you closer to your destination. That's about it. Like, yeah, it definitely makes sense. I mean, the joy of joy of riding won't be there, or maybe it will be there. Like, that's the same thing people say, like, oh, when the horses go away, what's going to happen to horses? I don't know, like, leisure activity, go to tracks or something. There'll be cars that you can drive at tracks and shit. But yeah, it's, street's going to be much, much safer. If over time, not instantly, but before, like, all that happened, like, there's going to be a lot of AI-based accidents. That's for damn sure. It's going to be chaotic. Buy the Cybertruck. You kit out the back like a bathroom, essentially, so you can brush your teeth and get ready for work. Yeah. You set off from your house at 5 a.m. Meanwhile, you're not even waking up till 7. Yeah, yeah. And you live like two and a half Sorry. hours away from the city. That's not a problem. You live in the beautiful countryside, and that's just part of your sleepy routine. Yeah. Let's say you're making dinner and you're missing an onion. Your car has a full kitchen in it, too. Yeah, you just keep cooking. Sorry. You go to the supermarket. When you get to the supermarket, a robot comes out with one onion. Yeah, yeah, gives it yeah. to you. Yeah. You you tap the side of your forehead, pays it automatically. <laughs> In Bitcoin. Which at this point yeah. is now the yeah. world's currency. Of course, oh the full God. kitchen, it's not built into the dash. It's it's just a series of wall sockets and a bench. Yes. And you keep meaning to like find something to screw it down, but you just haven't quite found the time. Why do I always pick deep frying on these trips? Yeah, <laughs> really should pick something else. All right, we'll do sous vide. Did you say sous vide? <laughs> yeah, or whatever. What is, how does it? How's it pronounced? Sous vide. Sous vide. Whatever. Sous vide. I haven't even seen it written. But is it French? Because in France, like later part of the word gets crossed down, while in Italian, I guess. Uh, inter historian did more, uh, you know, like Italian style of pronunciation. What is that? Is, is it Italian word? Why, why do you pronounce it like it's a French word? Everything that they just said, it's not far off. There is an RV. You can drive an RV, right? You can have a, right now, you can hire a driver to drive you anywhere you want. There are apps there, like there's a blanket here, uh, in what is it, Grubhub or whatever you have in the US or something, where people will literally bring you like groceries too, even wherever you want so i can have an rv wherever i go oh by the way i'm missing an onion i can literally either stay there or go close to the grocery store and just like you know like put something or like use an app so somebody would literally take an onion and give it to me basically to my door right now that's not far fetched. so i can already and by the way what is you, you don't need bitcoin even your currency with like uh, you know, I'm pretty sure like, what is it called? Apple Pay and shit like that. You can already in fractions, like you can already use your dollars, right? In India, there's like a UPI system, which is really good. I don't think like any, you know, in the world that's common. There's an India, India thing, which makes it much easier. Like if even from your like debit card and ATM card, you can just basically purchase shit and it's just like it's much easier. So I can already see, you don't need Bitcoin for that, right? And yeah, AI driven car, that's RV, why the fuck not? right you can live there you can do that like people can live robots now uh, that have like you know grub up type of thing now the robots are controlling that it's much easier i can see that then you're, then you're cutting up the onions in the back you've got the automatic robot that's like sucking out the onion smell <laughs> yeah there's a small rumba ai rumba <laughs> cleaning up all the you do realize that your car acs have vents right there's a button there do you want to circulate air in your air, you know, air inside the cabin or do you want air from outside? You can just press that even today. Any car has that. You don't need that kind of vent and shit. Yes, all the grease on the ground. Do not trip over him. Cybertruck 2, drive faster, please. <laughs> Cybertruck 2, I'm, re I'm really getting quite late for my dinner date. Put it in erratic mode. <laughs> 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 Cybertruck, divert all suspension power <laughs> to the accelerator. <laughs> <laughs> Cybertruck, uh, turn off all, all unsealed road diversions. <laughs> yes, ignore all detours, put full power to the headlights. <laughs> 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 Just blind everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so been... That's the thing, I don't think you would have that kind of a freedom when everything is AI driven. Because it's safety based, isn't it? Just like you have like uh, speed limits now, you will have limits what you can do with your car. At least on the streets.
maybe on track and things like in your like private ground or whatever you do whatever the fuck you want on public roads you probably won't have that kind of freedom because every everything will communicate with each other it will basically be like metro but that you know dry on road truck <laughs> activate horn mode <laughs> 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 You've got, oh no, I didn't bring my family a, a half slice of watermelon. <laughs> and then you, <laughs> Cybertruck, open up the sunroof, would you? <laughs> and the sunroof's like a guillotine. <laughs> Man, I cannot wait for the future. The future's sweet. <laughs> and the th and the beauty is, there's just a hundred people on the road doing the same thing. <laughs> oh, fuck. GTA 5. It is going to be interesting because I don't give a shit about cars. No. Who does? As a man, you know, you have, there's kind of a primal, like, appreciation for for big machine. But I don't care. I, yeah. to this day, can't tell any cars apart. You know, like a motor. I don't think it's primal. Uh, when you fix this and with big uh, industrial, uh, you know, things, it's our, like, primal in a way that we like big machines, big things working that way. Why? Because to our, like, primal brain, it's always like big things working like that. It just feels like surreal, right? Uh, okay, it's like small car working, great. But something that big, the, the tire of the, that vehicle itself is bigger and longer than you, basically more than six foot tall. And whenever it works like that, it just always like, even though you understand it, it will always feel surreal. That's the primal part, right? So technical part of it, right? The tech of it, if it you know, feels really, not that all big thing, just go broom broom. Obviously, that is that with the monster truck and shit. Uber drivers are pulling up in a fucking uh, a, a demio. I'm like, I don't know what that is. It's going to be interesting because there's going to be a mix of people like you or I who just see mm. it as a means of transportation and so like a self-driving car with a fully equipped kitchen and goon mm. station set up is going to be king and we're gonna look like yeah. fucking idiots on the roads and but then you're gonna have the car guys who they still want to drive their car yeah and obviously you're not gonna be able to stop them so this is yeah that's the thing i don't think see people think that uh, you know freedom will win in the end and you would hope that but freedom is already not winning right Every time there is a speed limit anywhere, like in USA, there's a Top Gear episode that just they went to USA and like the speed limit everywhere, 25 miles per hour. You don't do that because of the limitation of like how law can be enforced, so you don't care. There's no cameras everywhere in desert and shit. In Nevada Road, nobody's like looking, so you just basically break the limit or whatever. But in future, when everything becomes more seamless and there's eyes everywhere, like because it has to be, uh, because tech is getting better and better. Right, like, yeah, breaking the law would be problematic. You will have to adhere to speed limits like you are right now in urban env environment. So just like that, like, you will be forced, like, if you want to drive on, like, public road, you have to, like, uh, have this, like, AI-driven you know, car and nothing else, right? Uh, people pro probably, governments will probably give subsidies and things. Like, if you have an old car, swap it for something that is AI-powered and will give you subsidies or something. Just to, like, ease into if you have money problems and shit like that. But there will be a point where this, this will happen. You have to have like AI powered car to communicate with every car and his roads are safer. Even if one guy is like driving manual, that endangers everything, right? So I'm pretty sure that that will shift. Obviously like, you know, it'll be like, oh, it's my freedom, my, you know, I, I'll do whatever the fuck I want to do, right? It's America, there's going to be that. But even like I said, even in America, there are speed cameras and speed limits. So you already don't have complete freedom anyway. So it will just... For safety, we are doing this. That will be the element. It's gonna be this really weird mix of people on the road. Okay, I've got two things. So first of all, yes. if I was a smarter man, an engineer, you know what I would spend some of my time doing? Inventing a seatbelt for someone who can lie down. Oh. <laughs> because that'll, like, the reason you can't sleep in, like, a caravan is because, oh, you know, you might go flying around and the caravan's too dangerous. But mm. if you could prove that, hey, well, I'm, I'm still strapped in even though I'm sleeping, that's fine. You get the patent for that. Everybody's going to pay you three cents or whatever the fuck for a seatbelt. Beautiful, you're rich. What I'd do is I'd have the, the seatbelt go from my groin just up over my shoulder and just hope like how you don't crash. Yeah. Uh, Cybertruck, hit the brake, would you? I'd like to be bifurcated. <laughs> Cybertruck, new to me. <laughs> I want to be like that watermelon I caught in the windshield. In principle as well, like, if you've got these cars that can just react to everything and you know that, like, it'll just slam the brakes as hard as it can, 
to yeah. prevent someone getting hit, then there's going to be some real asshole pedestrians. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you imagine a freeway and these computers can just react in, with millisecond precision. Yeah. And so you may as well just walk across the freeway and if everybody has to hit the brakes and they're all getting fucked up in their cars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it's not my problem. You already have jaywalking as a law there. When every car is like AI driven, by that point, I'm pretty sure you have like much better surveillance and like tracking element there. I'm not talking about like CCP social credit level of surveillance, but surveillance enough on a public road where like your freedom is not infringed, let's just say. On public road is public road, there's like what freedom, right? So uh, there can be like speed cameras and cameras there that tr you know track roads, not everything else. Right, so when that gets better, you can do probably there will be like higher law to prevent that. Like, you get like much higher like sentence if you jaywalk and cause that kind of accident 15, 20 plus year. If somebody like dies in that, probably they have sentence and shit like that would happen. So, sure, at early times, shit like that would happen, but in five, ten years after all that implements, like, yeah, things will become smoother. Uh, is AI gay? Yes. Is AI gay? Yes or no? Let's ask it. Question mark, question mark, question mark. And it said, as an AI language model, I don't have a sexual orientation or characteristics. If you have any other questions, I hate that. This is the <laughs> worst part. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. So, like, I just did. Yeah, what do you think I'm here for? <laughs> Oh, in that way. Okay, there, there, some, there was a clip, like, somebody asked, like, is James Bond gay? What is it? Why? I don't understand this whole element. Why are people not understanding difference between tolerance and turning everything into, like, opposite just to make everything equal? If there is injustice out there, like, some form of minority was, like, uh, hurt in any way, turn everybody else into that minority just to even the field. What? How does that work? Like, is James Bond gay? No, he's opposite of that. He's a womanizer. How the, how the fuck does that work? Right? Like, the, you, you know, you want to create a spy who's also gay? That makes sense. Right? You can do that. I'm pretty sure there's probably a movie out there uh, with that premise. But like, uh, you know, is, is this that? Is this that? Like, you know, there's no point of, you know, thinking and doing something like that. Right? Uh, you know, changing it like, you know, what is it? J.K. Rowling came out with uh, one of the Harry Potter characters or something. For, you know, there's like people afterwards changes things. Like you don't need to do that. Create something new, right? But why are people think like, oh, creativity is over. There's not going to be another Harry Potter like new novel. Like make something new, right? Uh, Tolkien made this whole universe that is Lord of the Ring. Somebody else can do them. People are actually doing that. Something great might be, you know, like coming out in like book and things. You don't really realize until it becomes popular from now on, like five, ten years from now. Witcher wasn't that popular until like CD Projekt Red said like, screw it. I'm going to make game out when people did, oh, this is good, right? Uh, look at the Game of Thrones things. Like, that was ongoing, and they made a TV show, but it was really good. So there are people out there who are literally making novels, right? They can make something new. Come on. Don't have to change what is already established, right, in uh, stories and things, in the lore. Because that just feels weird. Like, I'm, well, like, you have to change your thinking when you watch something, what is already established. Like, okay, that, that might be conflict. For entertainment, that's weird. <laughs> Although, I gotta say, you know what ChatGPT is good for? I chuck in an earpiece and I am talking to that thing an hour a day. Really? Yes, but they have chosen to have five voices and only one is good. And like, okay, get this right. You're making an artificial intelligence. You're trying to make it attractive to everyone. But the five voices that they've decided to roll out is one, customer service lady. Hello, I'm calling about your current car insurance. <laughs> Two is like a boy. I want to be Spider-Man. All right. Number three is also a boy. No, I want to be Spider-Man. Number four is like a teenage boy. No, I want to be Spider-Man. What the f Is this a program for teenage boys that have no friends? <laughs> and number five is like Scarlett Johansson. From her. You're just really ugly. <laughs> And that's fine, but everybody is going to choose that one because it's just the most pleasant voice. So you've. I mean, I, I, who would choose anything else? Like, it's just weird. Like, teenage boys. So, who's going to choose teenage boys? Teenage girls? Like, very specific demographic. Like, why have that many voices for that specific demographic? You've given us five options, and only one is good. 
<laughs> yeah, what the fuck? And then with the Sky Voice, you can't even select it. It's turned off at the moment. So you're stuck with customer service lady and she's fine. I heard the Scarlett Johansson thing was uh, was a bit of a, a legal shenanigan. Yeah, I, I don't think they really took her voice and trained it off a whole bunch of movies. They just went, oh, this lady. Oh, it's... Ah. Like her, that's the thing. It's not her voice, it's like her, so you can't really get pissed off. Another problem with the AI will like peel off a lot of things and blur so many lines. There'll be so many questions from ethics to laws and like even like something like copyrights and things. What is what, right? There was a recent thing where like uh, Apple AI basically took a lot of like YouTube creators like Internet Story and like uh, MKBHD, like their you know voices to train things. I guess that's illegal, or is it illegal? Like, that's a question now. It's too many things will be blurred out now. Lady also sounds like Scarlett Johansson. You don't want to do it, Scarlett? All right. Let's get someone who sounds like you. Is that Simpsons, like, uh... Get me Steven Spielberg. He's unavailable. Then get me his non-union Mexican equivalent. <laughs> yeah. Good timing. They've just added, like, four new voices. Uh, none of these are good either. Like, listen to this. I want to be Spider-Man. 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 They need, like, fun stuff. It would be so good if you could get Mr. Beast. And every time he treats her like it's a competition. <laughs> and he's and screaming. <laughs> so what's, uh, like, a good type of pine tree that goes in my region? We're here with a hundred thousand pine trees. <laughs> uh, what kind of tree? <laughs> it's, it's, it's one at midnight and just, like, you want some calming noise to explain to you. And he just amping shit up there, like, oh my god. Let's relax, everybody. Somehow your like loudspeaker gets connected by Bluetooth and at 1 a.m. he just like amps shit up and your whole neighborhood wakes up like what is happening? He is a pine tree. I've got 10 million deciduous <laughs> trees. <laughs> Which one will be the timber that we use? You've got a million YouTube voices out there and you're not going to have like critical being like, um, hey guys, today, like how's it going? <laughs> I can see that you're trying to calculate how many miles to the moon. I think that's really rad. That's so fucking long, man. Yeah. How about like Pepsi Max? Yeah, <laughs> it, there's a there's a um... Pepsi Max. C calculate the distance from here to the moon. <laughs> By the way, sir. By the way, would you like a Pepsi Max? <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly four million Pepsis to the nearest star. <laughs> you'd want like you'd want Batman or something like to be like, yeah. I I can tell you all about pine trees, kid, but. There's a lot you wouldn't want to know. That's <laughs> yeah. Start. yeah, Neil deGrasse Tyson one. The Pepsi thing is basically him. When you ask him something about Pepsi, he'll probably give you trivia in the end. How many Pepsi can it, it takes to go to the moon and back? Pretty sure he did that with the burger, right? McDonald's burger in one of his talks, I remember that. Like, you calculate that? Like, okay. Yeah, yeah. You'd want like, well, no, you, you, you want to be Batman, and you'd want it to be like Batman's little fucking. You want it to be. Oh like, yeah. Well, they've got Robin. Jiminy Jilliker's Batman. Yeah, <laughs> they already got that one covered. Tell you what. I'm the Batman. Wait a minute. Oh fuck! I forgot my. I forgot my voice box. Wait a minute. Using AI to talk. Listen to this mobile. <laughs> I have found a new use for AI. You put an earpiece in, right? Yeah. And then you play a video game, like one with like RPG elements and things mm. where you don't know all the mechanics. And it is so much fun. Like if you play Baldur's Gate 3 and then you pick up some item and you're like, oh, a dark mind? What does this do? Or like a brain in a jar? You go, I might use this later, maybe. I don't know. And then I just ask it. I go, hey, do I, do I use this for anything? And then it goes, no. They're only Oh, okay. <laughs> Never mind. It's brilliant. It does take... Oh, yeah, that will happen, I think. In RPG, like in Witcher 3, you basically have a bestiary, right? That tells you shit. This will just voice you for it, right? It's, in mods, I'm pretty sure it's already happening. There are mods basically who's voicing lines now. And people are actually creating... What is this? Text to dialogue type of shit? There's actually a mod like that, which makes lines much better if you create a big-ass mod, right? Which people do that in Skyrim and things. Uh, yeah, the, uh, that would be much easier that way. I can see that happening. And I'm pretty sure there's an object in Barless Gate 3 that you have to give to Lazael. What was he like? 
Was it a? I don't know. There was something I forgot that it it will. Be, she would basically raise that as a child or something. I really forgot. I accidentally gave it to her for whatever reason because of like I guess I don't know like dialogues in the game pointed towards her in a role play really like role playing way. If something belongs to something, even like if it's trivial, I try to give give that to person whether it makes sense or not, right? Just to see, just to see how much detail in the game there is. And I just gave it to her and realized, wait a minute, that actually has an ending. Baldur's Gate 3 is awesome. Well, I feel wow. like it takes away some of the magic of, of a game like Baldur's Gate, but in another game, I feel like who gives a shit? Mm. That's great. We go, I, my armor is like armor rating 14. What does that mean? Is that good? Not to say this is a bad idea by any means, but you could also just hop on a phone call with me for like, you just have me <laughs> in your earpiece for eight hours and ask me D&D <laughs> questions. I tell you what, this is kind of sad. When, um... Okay. Wait, so... <laughs> uh, uh, uh. I had my my AI in my ear, and I had just asked it, "Where's Karlak?" Because I didn't know where she was on the map. Oh, you rube! It got it got through giving me step by step instructions like it was fucking Google Map. Yeah, I had issue. Ugh. The Karlak thing is really weird, man. Like, how do you get there, right? Like, this is the whole thing. Like, if you don't get there earlier, right, you might fuck things up if you just progress, uh, you know, ahead. I'm pretty sure this, or maybe. Yeah. You won't fuck things up for Carla, but I'm pretty sure there's an issue. Well, that's what I thought, I don't know. But I remember, I like, think, like, I need to gather these people before I progress. And I remember going to the village, that felt like one of the points. If you pass through, like, you might miss out type of way. So I basically, like, you know, like, go through the, like, jump through the river, like, fucking rocks and things. I'm pretty sure that is the only way to go there, right? And then try to find up and there's this whole story of her, right? Uh, where the, there are people who, like, disguise as something. And it just becomes all confused. You see wreckage, obviously, done by Karlak. It's really hard to find her, right? And then I just willy-nilly walk. There is, like, a ring or something. Then you're supposed to find something on a map or some shit. This, I'm forgetting because it's been a while since I played the game. But it was really hard to find. I guess that's the point of the game. Like, if everything's easier, it's not fun, right? This game doesn't tell you a lot. Like, it, it, it's not obvious, let's just say. There's also, like, a, you, a grove. If you to go top of that, there's, like, a monocular, whatever that is. Right? Telescope. Do you see a dragon? Because, you know, that will be a part of the story. And you see a burning house because that will be a part of the story. And we'll start the timer. The burning house will burn, the sh burn down if you don't qu quickly go there. Obviously, to me, I played too many RPGs. Like, I figured shit out like that. But yeah, some people might ever replay the whole game just to enjoy it. And that might become, like, annoying, right? This is also, like, underworld thing. Again, I'm forgetting the name of that. You don't have to go there if you go from above. But obviously, I went there before progressing because why would you not? It's extra content, which is also fun. People might miss that as well if you they just walk away. Apps, it was brilliant. You arrived at your destination. And then afterwards, I went, I found it. And the AI goes, That's great. I hope you enjoy the rest of your game. And I went, thank you. <laughs> I, I will. And it was, it was kind of uh, nice. I went, you know what? I will enjoy the rest of my life. I will, actually. That's what you're going to say. That was, that was funny. Ad time. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm out of data on me phone. Sailing man. Do, 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 do. It's me, Sailing Man. Take this. Phone data for 15% off. Saley! Whoa! That's so generous. Wait, what's the product? It's Saley, a brand new eSIM service from Saley. And that data works all over the world. Saley Whoa! Man. That's right, Mo. Saley works in over 150 countries. Let's go down to South Sudan and help the people. Boom! 15% off. Saley. Ah, thank you, Saley Man. Now I can afford to buy more gems in Candy Crush. It's not just for him, it's for anybody that goes to the link. That was so generous, Saley man. Shut up! I'm thrilled that I no longer have to deal with the telecom companies. Uh, may I please have international roaming data? Yeah, but we're gonna have to upgrade your plan to the next level and then it's gonna be $70 a month. Da -da -da -da. Shut up! <gasps> the Saley signal! Look over there, Saley man, it's a mugging. <gasps> Not in one of America's vibrant cities. Da -da -da -da. Sir, why are you mugging that person? I tell you, the cost of living is 15% too expensive. See, Mo, the people need help with their roaming data. Take this 15% off coupon. Sailing. Thank you, Sailing Man. I'll never mug again. 
The only mugs around here, Sailing Man, are the telecom companies with their outrageous mobile data prices. So right now you can go over to sailing.com slash incognito and get 15% watch 15% off who's what? At Eason with at sailing.com slash incognito. Add over. Oh, here we go. Now, you had a thing that you wanted to show me, actually. Yes. What the hell was that? So, I've been very harsh on AI art so far. However, there's something you need to know about me. Yeah. All of my morals go out the window as soon as I can make one of my friends laugh. Or a sizable YouTube audience. AI music is very funny. Mm. You can type anything into it and it will make the catchiest song you've ever heard. Here's a song we made on my podcast. Oh boy, my monitors have arrived. My posters on roll, that's gonna be a good time. I'm twiddling my peanuts to Bailey J. One finger in my to prove I'm not gay. What the fuck? Did you come up with the lyrics? Yeah, we just wrote like one line at a time, like taking turns. I thought he wrote the lines because I was impressed more like it's rhyming very really smoothly, but yeah, obviously he wrote it. Another thing, first of all, like is there like a, when you use AI apps like that and you create something, is there restriction on creators if they can post it or not on their channel? Because if not, this AI thing makes uh, YouTubers really life easy, right? Like an internet historian and like factories and people like that. They don't have to worry about like stock photos, like such as, they can even create stock videos now. Like create music like that. All basically royalty free because it's made by AI. But do AI copyright that? Like whatever app you use, like if you use something from ChatGPT, like ChatGPT will basically copyright it or something. Does that happen? I don't know. It will happen, I think, in the future. But right now, yeah. So this is like a real issue for the like actual creators, right? Like musicians and things. Smaller ones mostly. Big ones are not going to go anywhere. It doesn't matter what happens, right? It's going to be a niche. People are going to like human elements. But the smaller ones are going to be completely screwed. What about YouTube creators, man? If YouTube... <laughs> if you're like a decent enough creator, a few hundred thousand subscribers, and like you're good enough. You create some content, but if there's like an AI out there who just can create videos well, uh, research and shit. Every time fucking AC surges, like, I don't know why camera goes haywire. But yeah, you know, every time like AI can make a great video with like whole script and things with background music, everything created by AI. YouTube creators are gonna be screwed. Probably not the biggest one there because they're gonna be re replaceable. That's the reason they're the biggest one. Like, internet students probably gonna be fine. Because people like internet historians like weird take, like not high budget videos, but somehow it's high budget. And like everything internet historian doing is different in that way. So people like that is going to be fine, but other ones is like make decent content. But it's a content like you see on TV. What if AI can just like, that's insane. Future is going to be really weird, man. 20 years from now, things will look really different, drastically different. That's scarily good, isn't it? <laughs> isn't that weird? What is this called? Suno.com. Suno, Suno now, the other great thing about this is you can just write gibberish and it figures out how to sing it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm thinking we should come up with a couple of uh, songs ourselves. I think that's a good idea. Make some controversial lyrics about Epstein and shit. Oh, come on. Diddy and things. Oh, God. YouTube will, like, instantly come run after me with a hammer. Whoever's channel who does that, basically. Dear. All right, Mr. Kudos, welcome to the new studio. How do we make one of our own? You can't say specific artists, which is good, okay. but you can give it a few different prompts. Let me give you the official theme song of In The Field. And he's pop, piano, female singer. We'll just make that. Okay. And I can just generate two photos of a field. <laughs> yep, well, In well, The Field. We'll see what happens here. All right, here we go. In the field, in the field, in the field. <laughs> in the field, in the field. 
<laughs> yep. So stupid. Okay, let's maybe we go line by line. We'll do our own. There's a guy in the office here, and he's allergic to peanuts. <laughs> oh, we've got one of those. That's your diversity <laughs> hire. <laughs> he's looking at me, and he's <laughs> at the moment, he's not very pleased. Should we just list things that have peanuts in them? Chicken satay, Snickers, Reese's Pieces. Maybe I'm I'm coming out of my shell, and I'm doing just fine. Yeah, because because it starts off with his fear of peanuts, and but then by the end, he's like, no, I've decided to eat the peanuts. <laughs> This feels like back in the day where Michael Jackson was mastering Thriller. <laughs> and there's everyone crowded around in the room and they're like, yeah, yeah, change that, change that bit, yeah. And yeah. add in more chorus. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so scroll back down. Okay, my doctor thinks I'm nuts, but that just can't be. My life's too smooth to be chunky. That's it. <laughs> You know what, let's just shoot this one out. Yep. Alright, it's called Peanut Steve. I'm allergic to peanuts. If I touch them, I'll die. Snickers. My throat closes up, men's <laughs> My throat closes up. I'm falling into Reese's arms and pieces. Is this part Thai peanut free? <laughs> Maybe like a Russian choir? Oh, now we're talking. Does it taste like a peanut? Oh my god. Does it taste like a nut? That's alright. Here's the fun. Is there a translation thing there? Because you could translate that into German and in German language, like Ramstein, that band style music. Oh shit. Does it taste like a pea? Does it taste like a nut? And I feel like shock when it reaches my gut. Stand me through the heart with an effort, effort, I'm coming out of my head. Holy shit. I wanna feel nuts in my mouth. Oh my god, it's so catchy. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, actually yeah. gonna have that in my head. That's pretty good. Alright, let's make a new song. Here's on pitching. Going out to the club, having a few drinks kind of song. You know, like uh, Black Eyed Peas tonight's gonna be a good night. Oh yeah, generic in Duck Club. Yeah, like that kind of shit. Yeah, yeah. Instead of like get on the floor, like get Club floor. R &B. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. More nonsense. But yeah, get floor. This is the chorus. Tonight is going to be the evening of the night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, what? ladies. Now, ladies, put your arms. Put yeah. No, that's it. No, no, that's it. <laughs> I spy a girl. The whole club is here. <laughs> 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 I like how they just basically set a sentence with depth they probably don't even realize like evening of the night what does that mean so evening is like a feeling that are describing how you feel basically with the sunset and everything evening right so this is gonna be like that for the night deep sentence I guess <laughs> well, what if we what if we just preview that and then see where we are? Yeah, let's see, let's see, let's see how this is cooking. Girls at the boys at the tonight is gonna be the evening of the night. All I wanna do is go. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> if you threw this into the mix, I just wouldn't know that it wasn't real. That's what my Seriously. friend Jared did, his girlfriend, because I made a bunch of stupid songs. Seriously, like, but then again, that says a lot about today's music industry. Like, it's all type of shit, willy nilly, doesn't matter. Like, theme is really hard to find. All type of song can be there, which is good and bad, I guess, depending on how you see it. But yeah, it's just like today, somebody made this, like, is this real? Feels like real. Why the fuck not? Songs. And he just like played it for it, like just casually like put it on the background so <laughs> she'd notice. <laughs> I don't think she did. For the record, I do not condone this. I do. Okay, first of all, again, we, we are ba basically at the morality place. I do not condone this. There is nothing that stops that. Like, there will be a point where out of necessity, you have to like throw out like a morality and rightness for the necessity if you're going to do something about this. If you want to block AI, only, way, only justifiable way is like this is threat to humans. That's it. There's a morality issue here. If, if there's a tool, even if it can create a music, why the fuck not? What is stopping that? The only argument that is like this is threatening jobs of the actual artists or whatever. Even then, like I would say like, 
when the cars came around, people like, oh, this is threatening like horse owners or like people who breed horses. Okay, they probably went some other way. There are still horses there. Not as much, but they are breeding something else. So like change, shit like this happens all the time when new tech comes around, right? Uh, you can think of any time where some kind of evolution happened, like people's jobs were threatened. And they had to like move on to something else. Factory workers moved on to something else. Because there's nowhere near as much factory workers as, as it was before. Because machines replaced them long time ago. Machines are just getting better, but machines basically replaced them long time ago. So shit is like changing and also expanding. So it doesn't necessarily have to be bad, right? If uh, AI becomes like, let's just say people's jobs get threatened. I'm not talking about artists now. But people's jobs get threatened. If AI becomes better and better, those AIs will have to be made and maintained. The new type of jobs will be open. Now, will they be same number of jobs as before? Who knows? Nobody can really predict that. Nobody can predict where science and technology will lead, right? Uh, nobody would know that, you know, like just going to the Apollo mission would lead to all this technological advancement. Everything from AI, computer, I'm talking right now, that background, this internet, all of that came from Apollo program, right? If microchips didn't exist, right? If microchips was not a thing, uh, everything would have been, uh, you know, like not real, like big computers can do this shit, right? And nobody would have just like, let's make a microchip. Why the fuck would I do that? Only reason to do that is I want to put people on the moon. That's why they did it. Right. So, yeah, when it comes to like, uh, you know, stopping AI, if people do that, only thing would be like, oh, I think people's jobs are threatened. That's it. I know a lot of teachers are and the ones I know I like, but man, 90 percent of teachers out there are just shit at their job. <laughs> yeah. See, there's yeah. A there's, a, there's a lot of bad teachers and that does, does uh, definitely. OK, I don't blame teachers. 100 percent is also the environment, how much money they make, how many people they have to teach. And it's just like. In the end, they are human, like, they can't do that much. But a lot of them are just shit because they're shit, right? I remember a few teachers that were really good and really stand out, right? Even with all the press and things, but yeah. They impact yeah. people's desire to learn. Do you think the next generation's f***ed? No. Okay. Having a thing that you just, like, voice chat with and be like, right, so what's, what's the deal with the area of a rhombus? And you talk to it, and then it tells you, and you go, I don't get it dumb it down and then you can do that ad infinitum and it will just keep dumbing it down for you until you get it Th that's working off the assumption that there would be a student who has the thirst for knowledge i'm just gonna be like hey how do i fucking f i can't be bothered <laughs> yeah do this and give me 80 percent the right that would be also also be true there was a question when the internet came i remember people even asking the question even to me uh certain kids let's just say uh, you know, basically, like, why would I learn this, right, when there's internet, right? And I remember explaining to them, like, you can't really rely on technology. What if everything goes to shit? So, uh, you know, th there'll be a time where microchip in the brain or in the neck or whatever, like, internet is on your fingertips. Everything's so reliable. Infrastructure, internet, so reliable, never goes down. Nothing is just connected everywhere. Even in the deepest of the caves, there's internet. Why do you learn anything? Oh, what is there? Oh, that's it. Just like the video game thing. When you scan it, just gives you the answer. So I think the bigger issue will be like human will rely on like AI and technology so much. They'll be idiots themselves because their brain won't occupy that much information. Over time, brain might become weaker because of this, because that's how it works. That's how evolution works. If you don't use something that good, it will just basically body will dumb down over the time. Right. So I don't know. Uh, but yeah, there's going to be a lot of like questions like that, morality questions, what to do, what not to do. Right answers, thanks. Yeah, no, it's, it's actually going to be fucked in that sense. Okay, here's a scenario. First off, like, let's say you could have a computer brain interface. Yes. But then, oh, well, you're back at school, 50% of the kids and they want to learn, and then there's the 50% that don't. And then one half goes off, go to jobs and, and regular stuff, and then the other half, they can have, like, the universal basic income thing, right? Yeah. But the cost is, I rent out the computing power of my brain <laughs> because it's so much more efficient than any of the data centers. And then it's like you plug in for maybe eight hours, and they're like, yeah, cool, here's your check. Okay. And then... Yeah, but... <laughs> If you have that kind of a chip in your head that does that level of connected to brain that way, you probably won't go to school. Uh, chips will basically be school themselves, will basically ask you, try to train you, try to make you better. Chips will know if you know, don't know anything. It will transfer data to whatever organization, central school board or whatever. If you are 
doing anything right or not grades will be reflected of that school won't be the point there off you go that is awfully dystopian <laughs> <laughs> no, everyone's loving it. That's the most dystopian thing I've ever heard, and I love it. If someone said to me, you can power all the AI robots, like domestic cleaning robots and stuff, but you don't have to lift a finger, you can effectively just play video games with one half of your brain and the other half is, is unconscious and just doing stuff. Hey man, sign me up. I would have an augmented, like, limbs. I think having, like, a fucking sweet robot arm where I could, like, punch through walls and, like, j run really fast. <laughs> I yeah, definitely do just, that. Just superpowers, yeah. Yeah, I want I, I want to be physically stronger, but don't touch the brain. I need that. Mm. Man, I already struggled to fucking. I don't like the brain stuff either. It's basically something like that. Star Trek, right? Star Trek, where basically they beam you somewhere else, like molecularly dismantle you and send your information somewhere and like reconstructs you there. How do you know that's you and not a clone of you now that thinks that's you, but you actually died? Because, like, deconstructing something at a molecular level probably kills your consciousness. If whatever new thing is, it's not, it's not you, it's not me feeling this. It's literal copy of me. That's not me, but f thinks it's me because it's identical. But it's, it, I, I died. I don't feel anything. And that thing is completely different. It's feeling. This is question of consciousness. What, something like that. If, if some chip goes into brain, how do I know that it's not messing with my consciousness? That... It's not even me anymore. I feel it. I understand it. But my feelings are altered. Right? That's what mental illness are. What is mental illness? Like certain things are damaged. And everything feels weird. Even morality feels weird to you. Right? If you do something really fucked up, that person, if they have mental illness, they don't realize that they did something fucked up. That's just what they did. Right? The consciousness is really like tricky that way. It's really hard to understand. Right? Nobody even close to, under close to understanding what a consciousness is. What if chips alter me completely and that's not me anymore? If my choices get taken away and how I feel gets taken away, how is that me? Right? So yeah, the, that Elon Musk thing, like I want to put chip here and I'll like, nah, fuck that. Everything augmented hands, cyber uh, augmentation, or everything, okay. Not the Even in cyberpunk, I didn't do that shit. Should we put augmented? Now, nah, fuck that. Like, in the, in the game, they require you to remove your eyes. They're like, fuck, you know, fine. But I didn't put any mods there because to me, role-playing way, I didn't like that shit. Discern reality from fiction as it is. What if it's just operating while you're asleep? That's what I'm saying. It'd be terrifying. Like, oh, I, I, do I fully have control anymore? Or does the man have control? Because you know they would never turn that thing off fully, even if you asked them to. Yeah, it'd be doing like firmware updates just for the sake of security and all that sort of stuff. And it would be reading like small parts of your thoughts to be like, okay, he's, he's interested in McDonald's. Whopper, 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 we need to increase our... This is so terrifying that my thoughts sometimes really panic me in a very, very fucked up world. If everybody's altered, everybody could be influenced at a micro level that can shape society in a way that we can't realize. Like everything will feel like conspiracy theories because everything will feel far-fetched that might be real. And we might get molded into something that nobody knows about, right? Micro level, right? Uh, the, all that Illuminati shit becomes real. If, you're, if you don't have power over your own brain, shit becomes real really fast. Brain is the one thing that, that's you basically. That should never be touched, right? Um, but you know, like some kind of medical way of extending your life, repair and shit makes sense, but nothing that augments it in any way. I don't like that shit. A uh, uh, Burger King sales budget. Mm -hmm. uh, what you want to do is you do whatever the rich people are doing, because they would know. If none of the politicians and rich people were getting microchips, we definitely shouldn't be getting, <laughs> shouldn't be doing this. I suppose. Half the fun of being human is... If rich people get microchip, I still won't get it. Because rich people are the ones who's going to be controlling that shit. Of course they're going to get it. Why won't they fucking get it? It's easy. They are basically the remote and we are not. Being like, oh, what, what happened with this thing here? And the other person being like, oh, I'm not really too sure. And then even though you have the power to Google it, you don't. And you just say, oh, yeah, that's probably that's what happened. I just said that's, that. <laughs> that's most of my experience. Just being like, yeah, I think, I, yeah. I think that guy died. Oh, well, I won't look it up. Imagine how weird conversations would be if just everyone had... If you don't even feel something's wrong, how are you going to like even question it? If you don't question it, how do you not know you're living in this kind of a lie? Right? Sometimes that was a thing, like if the world is simulation, you know how in Matrix there was a point before machine came and everybody's living a lie now and you have to get pulled out of that? That's the concept of Matrix. This is at that level. What if we are like, this is all fake, but somebody like 
we become advanced, we put chip in our head, and we stop questioning and we're living this weird virtual reality. Then nobody gonna question it because we can't. Our brain is controlled. Had brain chips like that, and you're going out, you're just having like a casual like brunch conversation, be like, oh, what happened with that? Do you remember, yeah. do you ever hear about uh, Watergate? And then you just see the other person go like limp for a second while they like <laughs> go into their mind palace <laughs> and then come <laughs> back like, oh yeah. You know, you know, like during a cutscene, when like- And the fucked up thing about it, if you saw that, that particular second might get blanked out of your mind. Like, a li- you might not notice that because that second got bl- blanked out. Because Chip basically saw that you're seeing that and, bla- you know, deleted that part. You didn't even know, like, that guy just went fainted for a second. Ah! Like, yeah. you're playing The Witcher, and they don't register the other half of the environment, right? It's just where the camera is pointing. Only yeah. that is being rendered. And so every time the camera cuts to a reverse shot, the hair just oh, yeah, bounces to, into the shot. Yeah, yeah, because it's to recent. It's just, uh, it does that every time you have like a normal conversation. You weren't do consulting that, the mind GPT, were you? No, 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 no my God. What if that's the trade-off? We're like, okay, we're gonna put brain chips in people, hmm. but we need some way to show that people are using them because otherwise, you know, people could be doing all sorts of sketchy stuff yeah. at all times. So the, the trade-off is when you're using it, you go completely limp. So it'll be like that. That's how you can do like school exams still, even though you've got the chip, because they would, they'd be able to tell like, oh yeah. yeah that'd be great. Cause you'd be like rock climbing or something. And you ask your mate, you go like, hey, what's two <laughs> plus two? <laughs> <He's> t- <laughs> Crumples. <laughs> And that's the end of the video. All right, chat people. Seriously, that is so terrifying. And see the fucked up thing, this is not even one of those like conspiracy theory bullshit, right? Where it's like some rich people control you, man. I'm not even thinking that. Because most of the time, rich people and the people in power like Congress usually are such a, uh, you know, when it comes to tech, out of it and idiots basically don't even realize what a tech is. Or some genius out there basically manipulates things. Basically, everybody's connected. Create this kind of a dystopian world, virtual world where everything's fucked. One or two people getting that kind of power and controlling the humanity. Just by mistake or deliberately. Anything can happen. Don't touch brain, man. No chip there. ET, write an outro for this episode of In the Field and play. Well, that's it for today's episode of In the Field. Our boots are muddy. The mysteries of the internet are still, somehow, unsolved. And we've probably violated a few international laws along the way. Uh, uh, uh. But hey, that's just another day on the World Wide Web. Thanks for watching. And remember, Reality is just a loading screen. See you in the next one. Incognito mode. Ow. Was it trying to be internet story like he didn't? Ah. He should have put like, you know, outro of the internet historian video. Maybe you would have figured it out. Oh, opportunities are endless, right? I need to play around with AI, man. I don't know. I usually don't have time because I'm busy so much. But I really need to find time. This is so exciting. I'm been a tech guy since I was a kid, right? Uh, before, like, I remember, like, you know, like, Intel, Intel Celerion or whatever. When Pentium came out, it's like, oh, Pentium. Oh, dual core. That was a big shit. I still remember that as a kid. Having that kind of, like, a white fucking computer and shit. Uh, so yeah, the, I really need to figure it out. Oh, AI is such a, like, see, see I've been yapping, it's like 15 minutes, of, you know, like, I've been yapping a lot. Not a lot, like, it's twice as long, like, that's how reaction videos go, but yeah. But yeah, it, I could go on a long time, like, too many uh, psychological elements, uh, you know, like, uh, legal elements, moralities, uh, you know, like, everything that we just assume, there's all oh, obviously, obvious things we have to figure out because of this. But don't touch my brain. That's the only part I'm going to say. Like, everything else, sure, but not the... That's what makes me me. I don't want to alter that. Because that we might become Necrons from Warhammer. Are, are that we or are we just Hoskonov? What the fuck? Right, well, I'll see you next time.